Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> Good to see you again. <laughs> um, in this rather short presentation, I'd like to, to mention something that we've been working on together with Docker, as in Beeworks and Docker, um, something around networking. Uh, and the name of the project is Open Overlay. Um, essentially, what we've been seeing is that overlay networking is really becoming a commodity. And uh, I know that there are so many things that we do in common, right? So, um, and uh, the, the CNCF, the Cloud Native Foundation, has been driving a lot of projects forward. and. Um, driving the adoption of Kubernetes, driving the adoption of Prometheus and other amazing projects that joined more recently. Uh, and um, and for, for the best uh, of, of all the, the, the great network tools that we've built at the Works and Docker, we, we came up with the Open Overlay project. So I just thought, you know, it'd be good to sort of look at what, what happened in the past and uh, sort of recap uh, the timeline and actually like how, how things evolved in the last X years, um, three years must be. So um, we kind of, um, you know, 2014 we entered Docker 1.0. Shortly after that, Vworks released Vibnet. That was in September 2014. In a few months next year, Socket Plane jo uh, team joined Docker and started working on Lib Network and network plugins. A lot of things happened in 2015, right? We got Docker 1.7 was experimental Lib Network. Vivnet 1.0 was experimental plugin for Lib Network. Um, Kubernetes 1.0, as well as the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. All, all in June 2015, that's around the time of um, uh, DockerCon in San Francisco, I believe. And um, in November 2015, Docker 1.9 came out and uh, that featured Lib Network becoming stable. And uh, just sort of to give you an idea, you know, feels like <laughs> things gotten really quite stable there. In the not, not a lot is happening, but um, just kidding. Uh, so, um, but like with relation to to, to, to networking, these these were like the key events, right? Vivnet got released, then um, Socket Plane team joined uh, Docker and uh, Docker plugins, the Docker Network plugins, and Lib Network became a thing in, in uh, June 2015. Docker 1.7 and Vivnet goes 1.0, and Kubernetes 1.0 and CNCF was funded. And uh, later, Lib Network Stable, Kubernetes 1.4, why is that here? Because that's where, that, that's, that's the time when um, CNI, a uh, CNCF project, oops, sorry, I'll, I don't need that. Um, I'll pick it up later. So uh, CNI uh, became more stable, and uh, Beeworks did a significant amount of work on making Kubernetes CNI interface work better. And uh, VivNet soon went 2.0. It's pretty mature now. Docker, Docker is 17.3 now. No, point, um, point 0.3 earlier this year. And 17.6, uh, et cetera, right? So that's, uh, um, that's all great. What's today? Today we're seeing that, as I said, um, networking becomes a commodity and um, all the good projects live in CNCF. More about CNCF. What are all those great projects under CNCF? Of Kubernetes, Prometheus, Open Tracing, FluentD, Linkerd, gRPC, and uh, Core DNS container. D this is alphabetical order? No, it's not. Um, Rocket, CNI, Envoy, more recently, Jaeger, which is an implementation of Open Tracing API. So, Vworks and Docker would like to propose LibNetwork and Vivnet to the CNCF. 
as a project where we'd be able we'd be able to collaborate on networking under the Cloud Native Compute Foundation. So thank you. Thank you. So this is just something we wanted to mention to you today. Um, would like to hear your thoughts. Please feel free to get in touch. Oh, yeah, that's, uh, that's a slide. So just, just a little more um, before I go. Um, so there's CNI in, in CNCF. That's a, it's a pretty low level API for um, you know, passing some information from an orchestrator to, to, to a network implementation. And that's already in CNCF. So we'd be adding BVNet and LibNetwork as open overlay project. And uh, I was supposed to put slides down here. Anyway, yeah, I mean, feel, feel free to talk to us about this. And uh, it uh, should be easy to reach out if you have any thoughts on this, the future of networking, and uh, what does it mean to you as a user, and especially a contributor to my project. And uh, I'm happy to take a few questions now, if anybody has any. Yeah. Uh, is that just is that kind of this the combination of these two, or, or what's what's open overlay? Yeah, what's open overlay? That's right. Well, um, it it would be a project where Vivnet and um, Lib Network would leave on GitHub, where we could all collaborate and uh, and uh, potentially re potentially look at common things. But for for start, there are, there there is no. Uh, you know, the immediate goal is to, to just get under one roof. That makes sense? Yeah. Okay. Patrick, would you like to add anything to this? No. Okay. This was just like a quick update, so just to hear what, if people, people really want to talk about this, people just happy, like, go ahead and put like, we, We're going to put, put this forward to, to CNCF, and they, they, it will be a subject to uh, technical oversight committee decision on whether this should be happening. I guess, Ilya, I guess I have another, another quick question. So I, I spend a, a fair bit of time in the CNCF. One of the work groups that I participate in is the, is the networking work group. Yes. Sorry. Please. Please, Lee. Uh, so. So yeah. thank you for explaining uh, open open overlay. This is this is great. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I end up spending uh, some time in the or a fair bit of time with the CNCF and a couple of the working groups. And one of them was or is the networking work working group and and just trying to help steward uh, things like getting CNI um, through and adopted uh, in the first mm -hmm. place. And uh, and I've been extremely pleased by some of the announcements that we've had. Uh, coming out in terms of a pull request for compatibility between Lib Network and CNI, uh, which is fantastic. I think that's been in the works for some time. Uh, the and I guess uh, you know, so. My question is, uh, uh, you know, how, how do you see you know the like so both of these technologies have overlay capability. That's and right. just kind of noting open overlay as the, uh, do, do, is there any um, kind of pre-thought as to um, uh, how these two sort of come together and interoperate? Uh, That's a good question. You know, like, so, uh, thanks. Yeah, yeah, Patrick. Patrick. Please, Patrick. I, I can take this one. Uh, yeah, so... The, the, the goal of open overlay is to say that uh, uh, overlay networking is kind of commoditized right now. We have two implementations uh, in our two projects. Let's put them under one roof and, uh, and see if we can like, extract some common libraries that both sides could use uh, and eventually converge them, uh, but it's not necessary. And, and so we'll definitely uh, ping you pretty soon in the uh, CNCF uh, networking group uh, for yeah. uh, uh, for that submission. We'll we'll go in front of the TOC probably in the next few weeks. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. We'll be on schedule, so question. 
Okay, so we'll have a buff about networking, so uh, I can answer more questions on that uh, at that time. So let's, uh, yeah, let's go to the next one. Thank you. Thanks very much. Again, uh, so just have some quick lib network updates. Um, so last Mobi Summit, we did a demo of Kubernetes integration with uh, lib network CNI as a Novale driver. Um, so uh, currently, the current status is uh, I have a PR up for CNI compatibility for uh, lib network drivers. So that's the pull request. And then this will, and we have, we have completed the Kubernetes integration as well. Uh, and the PR is going to follow up uh, uh, with testing. Um, so there's obviously questions on what is CNI, CNM, what's the difference and stuff. Uh, so just from our perspective, uh, we don't see that as a competing implementation. It's more of a complementary one. Um, so if you think of CNI, it's more of an interface, and CNM is more of an object model. So we have object model uh, like a sandboxes, endpoints, and networks and stuff. So that that was one of the reasons why uh, it was it was uh, a, a tad easier for us to implement CNI with CNM. So what we're essentially doing is uh, you, uh, we built a CNI wrapper. Uh, so what it'll do is implement a create CNM objects uh, internally. So um, in, if you take a, uh, in, in terms of Kubernetes implementation, it's going to be like CNI sidecar with uh, lib network uh, uh, in, in, in the same part. So, um, so we, di we didn't have to make any lib network core changes. We used the same lib network object model. Uh, so we just put a CNI service in front of it. Um, and in terms of why lib network CNI, it's obviously because we have a full suite of drivers. So overlay, we are obviously collaborating with Weave, but uh, there are other implementations like Mac VLAN, IP VLAN, which are built in, and Bridge uh, if you are using like Docker from Mac and things like that. Uh, and and if, uh, if there are plugins that are not uh, CNI compatible and they're, they, they, they are hooked up with Docker, so we might be able to uh, technically support Docker plugins uh, with behind lib network as CNI. Uh, interface. So, yeah, those are just the quick updates I had on uh, Lib Network CNI. Am I? Yeah, there we go. Okay. Uh, so we're going to give you a real quick overview of Istio before the boff later today. Uh, it's just me, Zach Witcher. Dan is hiding in the back. Uh, so Istio is a service mesh. And the fundamental uh, problem that, that we're trying to solve is, is this. As we break apart big applications and we start working with distributed systems, uh, we have to start dealing with all kinds of different failure modes that we didn't have before. We have to deal with the network. Uh, we have to deal with building resiliency into our applications. Uh, we have to build out observability. It becomes hard to understand what's happening in a system when there are many different components that are broken apart and independent. Uh, and it becomes hard to apply policy consistently across all of your microservices. Uh, so Istio's goal is to solve a lot of those problems. Uh, it is a platform to connect, manage, monitor, and secure. Uh, and so what are some of the things that Istio does? Uh, Istio helps you with network resiliency by uh, letting you write policy for things like retries, circuit breaking, uh, fine grain routing. Uh, it lets you do uh, policy driven ops. It lets you push configuration uh, to, to do things like traffic shaping, uh, sp doing things like partitioning test and production traffic. So you don't need to use a network partition to ensure that, that uh, test and prod don't mix. You can actually use policy uh, in a flat network, for example. 
uh, things like rate limiting, uh, Istio also allows you to do. Um, also, like uh, mutual TLS between services. Uh, and it can also generate uh, metrics for you. Uh, and basically, the way that this, this works is we put a proxy beside all your workloads. And so because Istio intermediates all the traffic in and out of your workloads uh, via that proxy, we can do all of this. We have very detailed information about client and server uh, latencies. Uh, we have the ability to direct traffic. We have the ability to stop traffic from hitting your service if it doesn't satisfy the policies that you've set in place. We can uh, do TLS on your connections between services. And all that's transparent to the application because it's hidden by the network layer. Um, those are the, <laughs> that's the real quick lightning overview of, of Istio. Uh, there's a whole bunch of components uh, which we can dig into. And this is our basic architecture. Um, but we're really going to dig into this in the BOF, and, and we'll be there to answer questions and kind of drive discussion around how uh, Istio and Docker uh, fit together. Uh, and that's all, that's all I've got. Sorry, we were just told right before that we were doing this. <laughs> <laughs>